Hello. I'm Ruben Franken. Um, I have uh, I, I, I started a Facebook support group um, called For Equality Against Oppression. Um, it's really cool. You should check it out. There's a lot of great people on it. Um, it's a, all part of the Ruben Franken Project. Um, I'm not that self-indulgent to uh, name this movement after my real name. That's not my real name. My real name is John Marana. Um, I don't really like being called John. Um, reminds me of negative things. Um, Anyway, this is one of my more personal videos. Uh, I've made more than several videos, at least maybe a dozen in the past on here about drugs, drug addiction, um, opiates, um, Really, uh, first let me say, um, I'm an addict, and um, um, not not recovered, and I, uh, I've been an addict for a very long time now, and uh, I think a lot of the videos that I've made in the past about the subject, um, You know, I was hoping that they would be received well um, by the, the, the by all of you. Um, not a lot of my videos do get a lot of views. Um, it, it's such an important issue, addiction, especially. I mean, in America, um, I think though sometimes we don't want to hear honesty. We don't want to hear the truth. I've even gone so far as to not be honest anymore. I, 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 if it means getting people's attention about what I feel strongly about, then if I have to sell it in a way that people will buy, then I'll do that. Um, so I gotta really be careful with this video. Um, I'm, I'm actually um, using right now, or I was, I'm, 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 I'm high, or whatever you want to call it. I'm not really high, but, because um, you don't, you don't get high after a period of time. But anyways, um, so because of that, I have a lot of racing thoughts. Um, and I don't want to just start talking a bunch of nonsense like I usually do. And I want to make it this video because <clears throat> there's a serious problem that I'm dealing with. And mil millions of people are dealing with all over the world. And... Um, and I really want to express this in a way that I feel will be heard. To talk about this issue, I don't think I can just talk about addiction. Because there's so many factors that play a role in this disease. Addiction has taken so much from my life. Um, pr pretty much everything that I could think of. Um, I feel, I don't feel good about myself. Um, I don't even know how to describe 
how I feel about myself because I really don't think very much of myself. Um, I I don't really feel that I that I know myself as much as I. I analyze it and I understand. I understand it. I don't actually know myself, which is possibly why I have the Ruben Franken thing. Um, so hello, hello. Okay. Um, the volume. Um. So I don't know. What, I'm. I am crying out for help. I'm lost, and so is my family. Um, I don't I, like I'm. I feel I'm up against a brick wall, and the only thing to do is keep turning back. I feel that life is a, is not a reality for me. Um, uh, lived a very sheltered life. Um, I don't feel like I have that much worth at all. I can't really get close to people. I think I'll just hurt them. Um, all I know is addiction and drugs, and I feel like I don't even have my own feelings because they're all chemically, they're all chemical. My hands shake because I don't eat. Uh, I, I mean, I eat very little um, because I'm very unhealthy. Um, I think that's why I, I shake, but I'm so used to it, I don't even notice it. Um, I have anxiety, um, high, very high anxiety. That's one thing I know for certain. Um, I've been diagnosed with other things um, by different doctors, and I'm I I'm not ignorant towards mental illness. It's a huge stigma, but I'm just confused. Um, with my situation, um, again, I just, I don't know who I am, what I, what I, I do know I do have anxiety, that, that is really, I think, what, um, got me into the mental health system to begin with, um, okay, so, not too long ago, quite r recently, I, I got off of Suboxone. If you don't know what Suboxone is, it's it's an opiate. It's a semi-synthetic opiate. Um, if you don't know what an opiate is, you can look it up. O p i a t e. They're painkillers. Um, Suboxone is is a a, a safer. Um, better uh, way to treat opiate addiction than methadone. Um, it, it works great for a lot of a lot of heroin addicts and a lot of opiate addicts. Um, for me, um, when I started the Suboxone, it, it became another addiction and I was in denial. Um, because there was no more hassle with the streets and, you know, my parents were happy. Somehow I was able to, I was getting high and even there's a, let me back up. The Suboxone is an opiate, but it has a blocker in it called Narcon. I'm pretty sure Narcon is what they use when, uh, in the emergency, when you over, when somebody overdoses on, on an opiates, and uh, it takes them out of that, so they don't die. Um, 
basically it blacks out the high on it. However, uh, it is it, it, if you have it, it doesn't completely black out the high. If 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 your tolerance to opiates is low, when I got on the Suboxone, my opiate tolerance wasn't very high. That's what I believe, or that's the only thing that makes sense to me, because I was getting high off of the Suboxone. Um, I, I guess they call this the honeymoon period um, with opiates or any any addiction. Um, uh, you get high for a while. I got, I was getting high for at least about a year uh, on the Suboxone. It was prescribed and um, I wasn't doing much with my life. I wasn't doing much with my life at all. Um, there, there, I didn't, there was no, I didn't feel there was a need to because uh, I filled it, I filled my life with drugs and I was also on Lunesta um, that I was prescribed during a, a breakdown I had with insomnia that was extremely severe. Um, uh, if I had gotten sober when I was younger, but it didn't last, and, and then that's and then I had the insomnia, and then after the the insomnia fucked up everything, I got back on drugs. Um, and then eventually I got on the Suboxone. I've been on it for six years. I'm 28 years old and I'm pushing 30. I may have passed 27. Um, so, okay, so what, what, what do I say? Um, so after I, it, it got, it was getting me high, the Suboxone, and I was on the Lunesta, um, my doctor, uh, prescribed me Klonopin. He was, he was a very uh, stern doctor, um, very adamant about pres prescribing benzos with opi uh, with Suboxone or opiates. I mean, uh, I actually found out from another doctor that he only prescribed benzos to, to two other people or three, uh, three or two other people. This doctor only prescribed benzodiazepines to two or three other people who were also on Suboxone, and I was one of them. Um, I don't know why he did it. Um, it. I think it was maybe he, he realized I had a lot of anxiety, or I think it was possible. I don't remember. My memory is very bad, but at the time, I may have been getting... Um, uh, at a van or something off of the street um, occasionally and he wasn't going to tolerate that so in order for me to be a patient um, he decided to just prescribe me the clonopin. Um I was very shocked. Uh, I've been on benzos since I was around 13. It was my first real drug of choice. I, it took my panic attack away. Um, so, yeah, then I discovered the opiates a little bit later. I guess I felt safer with pills because they were prescribed, not all of them. And it's funny, it's ironic because when, when I was a kid, I, I never liked pills. They, they gave me the syrup, the liquid um, psych meds, psych medicine, because uh, I was scared of pills. Yeah, um, now uh, I'm not scared of them. Um, however, I'm very sensitive to pills. Um, a, lot, a lot of pills haven't worked out. Um, a lot of uh, Rehabs have not worked out on my behalf because I left. Um, looking back, I realize now that I didn't leave because I didn't want help. Maybe that was part of it, but the main reason was that I left 
yeah, that was part of it, but the main reason I didn't at least stick it out was because of the fact that, and this is not easy to say, but I'm pretty much attached to my house. Um, I've had bouts with agoraphobia, um, but I can leave the house. I do get nervous in cars a little bit. Um, but I don't get full-blown panic attacks anymore since I've been on the Paxil. Um, that's the only psych med I'm on right now, is the Paxil, um, aside from the narcotics. Um, you know, so back to the Suboxone. Um, I was taking the Suboxone with the Paxil and the Klonopin and the Lunesta. I eventually got rid of the Lunesta because it wasn't doing anything. Um, and then, so, so it was getting me high, the Suboxone, along with the Klonopin. Eventually, the Klonopin just started doing nothing because of its tolerance. And, um, and so, and then it, it, it slowly became more of a buzz, you know, um, then slowly became kind of like having a cigarette, you know, something like that. Um, to the point where it started, it just didn't do anything anymore. And uh, I realized, well, I think I did realize, but I didn't want to face the fact that I really was very much still an addict. An addict. Um, so, um, why did I get off of the Suboxone? Good question. Did I, dude, did I really want help? I mean, I really thought about this. I kept running out of it because I gained the tolerance to it, okay? And uh, it was causing so much stress running out of it. <laughs> now, I'm off of it. I'm still on the clonopin. And the stress that I was feeling once a month when I ran out of the Suboxone, um, has uh, tripled like crazy. Um, I'm, I don't have, a, I have one friend and I, I don't have access to drugs, but um, occasionally I can, I can get something from a relative or steal something here and there. Um, I, I, I'm able to sometimes get it off the street. Um, either whatever, if it's Percocet or Subutex. Subutex is basically, it's the same thing Suboxone is. It just doesn't have the Narcon in it. So it doesn't block the high. So I'm thinking to myself, well, yeah, I got off of the Suboxone to, to occasionally take it once in a while um, and cause a lot of pain to my parents. Um, um, so... I was born with a, a birth defect this syndrome called Golden Har syndrome. It's it's a uh, kind of rare. Most doctors I've met don't know about it, and uh, I have a, a, a mild case of it. Um, I had four surgeries. I had severe scoliosis, um, but I'm, I'm very grateful, you know, because it, 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 it can get really bad, um, so I'm deaf in my right ear, um, that's one of the big things that bothers me about having Golden Heart, because I love music so much, and when you're, when I was a kid, a young kid, I didn't really think 
oh, I'm deaf in one ear, you know, it was like, I don't care. But then I got older, I started thinking about this. I love music. I got this one ear, you know, that I can hear out of it. It became an obsession. My height, um, I'm not, I'm not very, I'm 4'11". Um, always worn lift shoes. Um, not comfortable with my height. I'm not comfortable with uh, people. Um, when I was a kid, um, you know, as anybody who uh, looks different or, you know, I was in a war of braces and, and a halo on my head, um, several braces, um, and it, 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 I, I don't know what you call it, if it was, it's, it's not, I don't, if it's bullying or what, you just feel different, and I, um, I felt different, I feel different, um, so, I mean, that's, I guess, my big, dark secret, if you ever watch Intervention, they always have the backstory, you know, to the addict, try to make it all big and dramatic. Um, personally, I don't feel that me having Golden Heart justifies anything in my life. Um, I mean, it's, it's affected me, but um, I, there's, I mean, I never felt... Well, I mean, my my parents loved me to death, but <laughs> to death. Um, the thing is, I don't I don't really think that they they believe in me. What I mean by that is that I don't they they've only seen me from one side, from one angle, and um, I, I know a parent feels so strongly they like they know their kid, but. That's the thing. Um, they don't trust me, but not just in a way like, oh, I don't trust you, don't do that. But it's like they don't know what I'm capable of um, or what I can be capable of and, and what I don't know I'm capable of. And it's like a half and half thing. There's a negative and a, a, negative and a positive. One side is completely... You know, I'm not going to make it, you know, I'm just a statistic, this is going to end bad, you know, I'm worthless. The other side is more optimistic, um, but it's the whole idea that it's so surreal. Um, because I've never... It's, it's sort of like the perfect storm. I feel like I never had the proper opportunities, and it's created the perfect loser. Not that I'm the center of the universe. I know that there's other people out there like me, and we're not losers. That's why I try so hard to reach other people that would relate to anything that I say. The way I see it, not to get off topic too much, but what I was talking about in the beginning about equality is very important to me. Um, I feel that equality fights against oppression um, more than anything, and I feel that we're all we're all equal, not based on the Constitution or because of God, but it's it's a firm belief that I have, um, and. Um, so, I, we're not losers. I just, in a way, I don't know if it's the drugs making me do these videos. If, if, it, if, it's, if it's my life in general. I mean, I got on YouTube to, to put some of my music up. I've been, I love music, you know. A lot of, I've, I've uploaded a lot of music, not a lot of it is good, I mean, you could judge it yourself, it's just all sorts of stuff, I, I've been playing guitar since I was young, um, you know, I just, you know, I'm, I'm self-conscious about that, I'm self-conscious about everything, sorry, I don't mean to be so negative, um, 
to this thing. Um, so, yeah, I'm a prescription drug addict. Um, mainly the, the opiates and the benzos. Um, but I've dabbled with with Soma, you know, muscle relaxers, uh, Adderall. Um, uh, can't think right now. Any narcotic, basically. Um, you know, um, I guess I bought into all of this bullshit. Um, I learned nothing from the Dare program. And not to say that that it was my fault for not for not listening or understanding the the Dare program. I I don't know if it had anything to do with the fact that I was in special ed and and the fourth and fifth graders were put to, put together in the same class and and the Dare program was for the fifth graders, but I was in fourth grade. But they gave the Dare program to to the whole class. So maybe I was too young. I don't know. It was funny, the officer, the, 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 the police officer who, um, who taught the D.A.R.E. program, I, I saw her much, many years later when I had overdosed on Xanax and gasoline. Um, I, was huff, I was huffing gasoline. Uh, my teen years were kind of fucked up. And um, I... I, I uh, I saw her in the ambulance, and uh, I remember saying, hey, that's you, or something like that, but I was, I just thought that was ironic, she, I remember she looking at me, as much as I can remember, kind of like, yeah, it's me, it's me, the D.A.R.E. program um, teacher, who was a police officer, woman, um, that was fucked up, and I've caused my parents so much pain. Uh, I I don't know what to say as far as suicide, and that's probably why I'm making this video because um I've exhausted everything and um. Somehow my, my my parents are so frustrated. They think that I want this life. They don't understand that being. I. I this is not. Nobody can live this kind of lifestyle in a house like this. But. I don't like it. The only way and the only reason I can maintain this is because of the drugs. For me personally. And I, mean, I can't function on drugs. I can't. Okay. Which makes sense. There's a lot of... You, you hear the term used often. Functioning addicts, non-functioning addicts. Well, for me, it's definitely non fun I tried to function. There, there were period. There was one period where... I, I don't know what it was. I, fe I felt really good. Things were great. Um... And I, I got a lot done. I tried to get my GED. I've tried in the past, but this time I really tried. I, I, I did half of it. I didn't go the next day to finish it, though. <clears throat> my point is, though, at that time, I, I did so much. I went to New York City. I live in New York State. I've never been there once. I've never been on, I've never been on a plane to this day. I don't know why, why I just said that. But um, my, point, my point is, is that um, that was a good time. I, I really tried to function on the drug, on the drugs, and, um, and I bought into, I, I, what was bad was cool to me, I, 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 if I think about it, I think, like, I, I didn't feel like I fit in, I felt like a joke to everybody, I felt like I was, I was the entertainment, I had to, I had, like, people would see me, and they would, I was I was always special, you know. Like I wasn't treated equally. Um, um, so 
I guess having thinking about drugs was the beginning of it, and then getting into my teen years and just feeling like I I needed it, almost like I knew I was going to be an addict. So I don't blame anybody but myself. Although I I do feel that the mental health system played a role, a key role. Um, but I you know. I, I I was garage hunting, you know, for alcohol, you know. Um, I think even before I I discovered the pills, you know, um, I was desperate to to escape. Um, I lost all my friends. Um, I don't know why. I was obnoxious. A lot of people thought of me as bad, um, I, um, a lot of the, so a few of the parents, the mothers of the, of my friends didn't want me to hang out with them. I guess it became, it got around, it got, just that I was a bad influence. I, a lot of the kids in the neighborhood left or, you know, I, it was just like they left, you know, um, when I was in high school, it was um, not like going separate ways. It was more like everybody just left. And it was my, me too, because I was struggling with the thing with my ear that I was talking about. I was going through a sort of agoraphobic stage where I couldn't leave the house because I was afraid of noise. Um, it was always one thing after another thing after another thing. Um, I don't know, I never had a lot of, you know, chores or discipline or, <clears throat> you know, structure, um, just lots of love and, um, I mean, uh, I mean, my, of course my parents disciplined me, I'm not making my parents out to be bad parents, they're great people and I love them, they're incredible. I think it's only natural if, if, if a child, if it, if if your child is born with something, it's um, it's it's instinct to 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 feel bad. However, I don't feel from my experience and from my readings, I don't feel that pity is healthy. Um, my mom is a great person, but she she has always she is such a caring person that it, it, it ends up hurting other people. I have a temper. My mom has a temper. I have a temper. My, mo my mom also struck us. Uh, she had, she had uh, knee surgery and arthritis and pain. So she was prescribed, you know, Vicodin and Percocet, and and uh, my grandma was as well, which is no longer here. Um, I I don't see my family a lot because I, for a lot of reasons, I think they they're uncomfortable with me, um, and uh, I'm uncomfortable with them. I I. It's hard for me to get out of the house. It's hard for me to take a shower. I'm sorry. It, it is. I have, I chew Nicorette gum because it. I quit smoking, but the op the opiates, whether it's Suboxone or you know, it it it's like coffee and cigarettes. Opiates and nicotine go together, but be, I because it's a painkiller. I don't feel it. I don't feel what it's doing to me, but it's doing a lot to me. I can't, I have no energy off of the drugs. The drugs just numb what I'm feeling physically, but, you know, I'm still on the clonopin, but still I feel, I, I don't crave the nicotine off of it, and I'm, I know what I'm doing to my body. I can't even, you know, get up and take my niece for a walk down the street, like, right out of the driveway without getting exhausted. I've been really depressed. Um, you know, uh, I, I, it lit, 
my niece is like the one good thing in my life and uh my 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 uh my my brother my brother in law said you know it pisses him off that I don't come over more you know um you see my 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 my, my nephews who I also carry very much about I just um there's a lot going on in, um right now um but I care about them a great deal. And so I feel I'm failing at that. I know what I gotta do. I, I just gotta do it. It's just, so. I mean, it stops just in case it stops. Okay. Thank you for listening.